I've just finished my Masters of Engineering in Civil Engineering at UWA. Hi Sobcon, my name's Justin, I'm a PhD researcher at UWA. My research is based on looking at the uh, drag and inertia coefficients of different coral reef structures and I'm helping out Sobcon here with a bit of wave attenuation as well as drag parameters. For so where all the wooden mounts are on the flume, those are wave gauges where we're measuring surface elevation. So we have three upstream of the structure and three downstream and then one over the top. And upwave and downwave of the structure are also measuring velocity um, so we can do some reflection analysis. Um, this is our, our monitor room, our data control room where all the information we collect from the wave flume feeds back into. This is the wave generation software. In the wave generation software you have two things which characterise the wave, it's, it's period um, and it's height. Well this wave's going to be a 0.66 frequency, so one and a half second wave with an amplitude of 0.05 metres. We set a duration that we want to run and then this gives you a time series of the, of the paddle displacement, so the movement of the paddle through time. The red is what the wave that it's going to create down the flume. The dotted red line is the wave height that we imported for the wave. Yep. Um, and the blue line is the measured one. So you can see that the wave height basically starts as we put it in. And then over the structure, it's a bit higher than the input, probably because of um, the waves trolling, breaking a little bit. And then the wave height decreases after the structure. So it's like shoaling a little bit and it doesn't quite break. This is only one of the conditions we're running. Yep. If we increase our wave height, it probably start breaking, dropping that wave, wave energy down significantly. 